Hello, I am Dana Alsaya, presenting my master dissertation, Drosscaping Tripoli's International Fairgrounds. Coming from Lebanon, I've constantly questioned the role and importance of contested legacies scattered all around my country, which directed me towards choosing one of the most controversial legacies of Lebanon. The International Fairgrounds of Tripoli in a city located on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, also known by the name al fayha which translates to the fragrant city, symbolizing the smell of citrus trees that used to cover the entire city long ago. This city has developed along three nodes throughout different historical eras. After the independence of Lebanon in 1946, the new government decided upon enhancing the economic and political role of Tripoli in the Middle East by establishing the third node of Tripoli, crowned with the fairgrounds for that Oscar Niemeyer was invited to design. Mostly influenced by his experience in Brasilia, he expressed his visions of the fairgrounds to be an element of social change and democracy raising Tripoli towards modernization and uniting the world of international pavilions under one roof. However, these visions were shortly euthanized due to the civil war in 1975. The fairgrounds were abandoned ever since and in dilapidating conditions. Once used as a military bunker and an execution space by the Syrian army, this rendered the project as a broken promise in the eyes of its citizens and now they're totally alienated from it. This alienation is not only due to the misfortunate political circumstances. Foreign architectural approach of Niemeyer with its top-down modernization completely disregarded the existing urban fabric and the social values of Tripoli, creating a huge gap between the fairgrounds and the city. And now, after decades of its initiation, a series of urban, social, and cultural dichotomies can be mapped as the aftermath of this project, dividing the city into three parts. To further the mental borders, the government placed an infinite wall of concrete blocks around its circumference. Visual and physical access remain a fantasy for tripolitions. The wing that was once intended to host unity of the world is now off-limits for its own people. For decades now, the fairgrounds has been associated with a negative perception of being a waste space. But is this really what it is? Perhaps if we change the way we look at it and regard its isolation as a bless that has been protecting this modern urban island from sprawl that currently dominates the rest of the city. This space suddenly becomes positive giving opportunity for more sustainable and responsible interventions that can serve the desperate needs of the city. The Ibirapuera Park in Sao Paulo is a project by Niemeyer and Marx. It is considered a very successful public space where visitors live exciting experiences in the vicinity of various landscapes and functions. Perhaps this project stands closest to reveal what could have been the outcome of the fairgrounds had it been finished and put in use. And by that, it also highlights the essential absent role of landscape in the case of Tripoli. This sparks up a true potential of a large green patch dedicated as a breather for the entire city of Tripoli. Therefore, an analogy to a jewelry box is born that has been safeguarding this monument, but instead is filled with greenery and even more, an urban wilderness. A greenification process that gradually dissolves and breaches the perimeter. And the first step towards doing that is by tackling the existing wall, which is now dismantled and used as scattered canvases in the landscape, as a political statement of free arts against oppression. A part of the multi-laned highway is converted into a pedestrian street, creating a transitional space where greenification infiltrates the surrounding streets and create an inviting element to the fairgrounds. While the other side of the highway is crossed over by means of bridges, 
facilitating access to the coastal lands and into the sea. This greenification is not only a decorative element. Landscape is considered as infrastructure, and as referred to by Alan Berger, it is drosscaping. Drosscaping the land into an essential system of wetlands that in turn helps solving the issue of wasted and polluted water in Tripoli and as a result giving out interesting landscapes, balancing ecosystems and serving water demands of the urban gardening area, where a significant portion is dedicated to revive the legacy of the citrus trees. Along this strategy, a more architectural intervention is designed. On the most prominent element of the fairgrounds, the wing that originally was imagined to unite the world can now reunite the people of Tripoli with different socio-cultural backgrounds along a common grounds of productive activity. These activities that shape an essential aspect of the city's identity throughout the centuries as productive activity serves as the main source of income and development in Tripoli. These activities are currently confined to insufficient spaces in the old inner city that can no longer sustain their expansion and development. Leading the youth to give up on their own skills and flee the country. Therefore, this wing that currently stands as a threshold, dividing the fairgrounds into an eastern and western part, poses a remarkable affordance for these activities to thrive. In order to establish visual and physical connectedness and to overcome this threshold, the wing is levitated by a height of 10 meters, freeing the ground floor level and giving space to vertical development. Due to its prominent modernistic features, there exists an alienation between tripolitions and the wing in particular. For that, the idea of introducing familiar architecture emerges by reinterpreting traditional typologies of the old city. The first being the courtyards that are a central space featuring elements of greenery, light, and vertical circulation. Applying this concept to the wing creates vertical cores and connections into and from the wing. The second being the souks where productive and commercial activities originally took place. Together with the courtyards, depicts a very intimate identity for the citizens. It gives them a sense of belonging and familiarity. And along which the productive activities can be spatially arranged. The wing is divided among the different activities, but can now take place in a more equipped space, not only in the inner city, which are then arranged and grouped according to common products and dependencies. This gives the wing another pivotal role of a think tank, where crossover between different skills and activities can take place simply by walking through the central archway. People can pass from one environment to the other, interacting with different people from different backgrounds, new materials, products, and even sounds. Through the soap zone, with its different fragrances and textures, which uses oils and aromas extracted from the citrus fields. The fabric zone, that changes colors with each fabric produced, and can be appropriated according to the production taking place. Reaching the furniture zone, that can very well incorporate and host workshops in collaboration with fabric skills. Not all spaces are necessarily occupied. Some zones come as an architectural break, experiencing the space for what it is, overseeing the double-sided landscapes that change with the natural cycles of its wilderness. The wing can be equipped with flexible, multi-purpose panels that help dividing space and ensuring safety. As I do not claim, that the suggested functions are a must. A change is always foreseen and is inevitable. Therefore, it is taken into account.
Tripolitans have long been struggling on so many levels, while huge affordances lay untouched and abandoned. This design proposal breathes life into the broken promise, uniting its citizens, reviving its identity, and giving opportunity for society and ecology to develop by the means of spatio-cultural crossovers in an urban wilderness. A special kind of wilderness that is not wild in the negative sense of the word, but rather is free, giving justice to human scale and experience, all which can be lived in the new third node of Tripoli. Marching a step forward towards mending the broken promise and sparking a true development of Tripoli and its citizens.